insulin resistance at different organ system, the brain, the colon and microbiome, immune dysregulation, the small stomach and small intestine, and the kidneys. So, so just to navigate this difficult scenario or the complex scenario, now the older classification or the usual classification of diabetes is not sufficient. Now there are various subtyping of diabetes which leads to the <coughs> physician treatment of type 2 diabetes. And the spectrum starts right from severe autoimmune uh, diabetes, severe insulin deficient diabetes, severe insulin resistant diabetes, and then there are other form of mild diabetes which are related with the obesity or the aging. And also there is difference in the treatment of all these different types of diabetes. In fact, the recommendation according to the subtyping is that if the patient is having element of autoimmunity, then you start insulin obviously. If the patient, if you can prove that patient is having insulin deficiency, then either you can use DP4 inhibitor or a sulfonylurea along with metformin if the patient has got an element of insulin resistance as well. Now you go from this subclassification of type 2 diabetes, which is from the Western uh, data set to the Indian data set, the third column from the Anjana et al. It shows there is in, in the Indian population this another variety which is called SCIRDDD that is combined insulin resistance and deficient diabetes and you will find that these patients will constitute almost 20% of your patient population especially in the people who are practicing in area where the rural population is coming for their diabetes treatment, lean thin patient of type 2 diabetes. Now this is the two scenario. The lady who over here has got high BMI, uh, increased waist circumference. The male over there is uh, not lean, but normal BMI with normal waist circumference. And some, some subtle different problem with the lipid profile over here, almost normal lipid profile, but very, very high fasting blood sugar and HbA1c. Now, in our clinic, we are using a software, which we call the uh, metabolic scorecard. It is the compilation of various formulae, which basically show the level of insulin resistance, the site of insulin resistance. These are all evidence-based formulae and you can see in the lady that almost all the formula fulfill that this lady has got a severe insulin resistance that is SIRD. But when you see the male patient, everything is green except the two orange arrow which show that there is borderline high uh, insulin resistant, uh, the MES IR score and another one is that atherogenic index of plasma is more. They are all evidence-based formulae and in this particular patient, there is less of insulin resistance at the level of liver some insulin resistance is there which can be attributed to the muscle and in this particular patient where the HbA1c is very very high you can use a combination of a modern sulfonylurea, metformin and pioglitazone. Now just add one more factor and that is slightly increased blood pressure and as soon as you add blood pressure the glucose disposal rate uh, formula shows the abnormality and it is one of the strongest predictor for the CVAs in this particular patient and pioglitazone is only drug other than GLP-1 analog, which is pro proved to reduce the stroke rate in type 2 diabetic patients. So in particular patients who are lean and thin or not uh, overweight, where the insulin resistance indices are not there, some amount of insulin resistance can be shown, sugar is very, very high, HbA1c is very, very high, and th these patients who are having high blood pressure, these patients would particularly go for this combination of triple drug, that is model, model sulfuryl urea and metformin and pioglitazone, sorry. So uh, in this particular patient, we can use this combination. And uh, usually these patients com come from the rural setting, no significant family history, and usually these patients are insulin deficient. Now, uh, the bottom line for our practice is that hyperglycemia is important and it kills the patient. It leads to the reduced quality of life and multiple complications. Uh, the legacy effect basically saves the patient and improves the quality of life. So you need to control the hyperglycemia right in the beginning aggressively. And finally, the guidelines are there, but we have to adjust the guideline according to our own needs and according to the needs of the patient. And with that, uh, I show a practical example for this particular patient. You see this combination, when you compare for whom it is required, for a patient who is lean or normal BMI, relatively young, high fasting blood sugar and HbA1c and especially this patient who is already on sulfonylurea met metformin combination, this patient is having combined insulin resistance and deficiency diabetes. And in this particular patient, when you use the third drug pioglitazone, 71% patient would reach to their HbA1c goal as compared to only 47% patient who are there with the metformin glimparide combination or metformin sulfonylurea combination. So you can go for this combination. 
relatively young because if you go to the literature, the biggest problem with 5 liter zone is the fracture risk and fracture death, which is not there in the group, which is say between 35 to 60 years of age. Beyond that, it increases. So for this particular patient, you can be using uh, the, this combination. And the cost utility analysis shows that it can also lead to the stroke risk reduction by almost 47%. So in those particular patients, you will be using the combination. And again, the final slide is that treat as low as possible, given the patient circumstances and the safety. Treat as soon as possible, treat as long as possible, treat as safely as possible, and treat as rationally as possible treat individually as possible. So with this, we can come to uh, the era of precision medicine, even in our day-to-day -day practice. Thank you very much for patient hearing.